Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Wiffy here, and this is my first video. Going through a bit of a watch fixing kick right now, so I wanted to feature that. I've got a Lucerne Art Deco watch here. I think it's a men's watch given the size. Get a little close up there. Yeah, I found it at the like, uh, antique mall around the corner from where I live. Thought, hey, you know what? Let's make this my first one. So get a little close up. Yeah, for reasons you'll see in a little bit, I thought maybe I'd want to reloom this and also that, you know, whatever happens to this one, folks aren't going to be too upset. But yeah, here you can see the plating's coming off. It's getting a little tarnished. You can see the brass coming through. Might be a good candidate to like electro plate just because I'm trying to do a lot with this, you know, got a lot of hobbies, got a lot of interests. Might as well see how they work. And here's the back. Back's fairly clean. Uh, open it up here. Yeah, I opened it up earlier just to like take a peek and see if this would be a good candidate. So right there you can see Eastern Watch Company, Hong Kong. Yeah, you got some hair. It's a little dirty, but otherwise it's pretty good. Here, yeah, it didn't wind in the store and we can see it's because that ratchet wheel is completely missing. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Might see if I can get a donor, but otherwise... Yeah, I, I think I'm going to definitely, like, try and reloom the dial. Like, it's, it's kind of dark. It's not really working. Uh, given the time period, I'm not particularly concerned about radium. Uh, I checked around for this. It definitely seems like it's during the Promethean and uh, Tritium era. So, in any case, uh, I'm still going to try and clean it off. Uh, you'll see the results here in a bit. But Easter Watch Company, everything's kind of matching up, but... You also see one jewel unadjusted. It's only got one slot there on the balance. So if I mess it up, it's not a big deal. So pulling out the stem, pull out the retainer ring just a second ago. That came out way easier than I expected. So a little concerned at this point. And yeah, dial looks, you know, not bad. It's a little clean, but mostly I want to redo it because these Bots are just missing the gems. Top two, one and the one on the three clock position are fine, but actually you can see just a little bit. That bottom one's like someone's like push it out from the back, so the metal's all busted. So I don't know. Not sure about the dial. Uh crystal's pretty good. Could use a little polish. Pops out right that. Uh, I could use it clean too. Let's go ahead and get the second hand off. Yeah, I got the minute and hour hand off. There goes the minute and the hour yeah as you can probably see i'm making my own tools for this one i'm sharpening screwdrivers and tweezers on the fly just to make sure they fit it's worked out fine for this one uh i've got a couple of tools that are you know more meant for what they're supposed to do on the way but you know for now it, it worked out oh you can see actually the bottom there that the metal is pushed out of the dial that's what i was talking about and yeah it just pulls right off yeah under part looks fine we'll peek the dial one more time and yeah zooming in here it's a Baumgartner 866 it's a pretty common movement from the 70s uh oh there's my alarm going off the background i didn't realize what was happening i thought somebody was just playing music i thought my husband was up anyway uh yeah i'm just gonna pull off the dial washer there uh, at this point, I'm just kind of listening to the music in the background. Yeah, it goes. And yeah, it's a hard pivot down there. But while I was looking at that, I found the problem why of why it wasn't um, winding. And yeah, as you can see here, the spring lever, something like that, whatever it is. Yeah, it's just broken off. Probably got to figure out a way to do something with that, but there's bits of metal that came with it. And there it goes. So here I'm kind of seeing if like everything's going to move. It kind of moves a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, exactly me. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Not 100% confident at that point. I'm starting to feel a little unsure. Uh, you may have noticed I don't have a movement holder. So I'm printing one out in 3D printer. Went ahead and figured since I got a few minutes, I'd go ahead and set up the ultrasonic cleaner. One, two, yeah. Yeah, so those are the parts. I'm just doing all the exterior stuff. Case back, crystal. Crystal really needs to like, clean up around the side. It's real dirty. 
Yeah, just feature it there so everyone sees. And the retaining ring is pretty clean. We're going to throw it in. Along with the case. We've seen that before, but one last little look. And in the end, this is how it came out. Look at that. You know what? You know what? I really do like that case now. I liked it in the store, but I like it even more now. It's cleaned up. Crystals came out nice as well. Yeah, not really. There's a couple of specks of dirt that I found in the loop that I just sort of, you know, scraped off the nail. And there is the first movement holder I made. You'll see a second one later on. And this is me realizing that, yeah, it, it technically works. It, it holds a movement. Sure. Um, and, but I'm not satisfied with that. So there is the, what the, I think that's the second wheel. Yeah, I appreciate the second wheel. And yeah, zooming in. It's got some, got a little bit of varnish on there. Got a good bit of oil. So just wanted to show it off there. And I thought it was a Canadian pinion, but it's really just a floating pinion. Uh, I spent 10 minutes on camera just playing with this lever, trying to like think about it. I cut all that out. Uh, come back to decide to pull out the balance. Uh, really, at this point, I was unsure if it was going to move freely, and I want to examine the pivots. Yeah, take out the screw, and it just kind of lifts off easily enough. And I'm trying to pull out both at the same time. It's a little stuck on the anchor, but kind of just worried out there. And there it is. Uh, I was only on screen for a moment, so I tried to do a freeze frame. Uh, after that, I want to pull out the anchor. Check that out as well. The screw came out easily enough. Goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was varnished onto there. It took me a solid bit to get that pulled off. And there's the anchor. At first, I thought there was a bent pivot, and I spent a good bit of time trying to really get this focused in. But as you can see, you know, the pins, the pivots, they're all looking good. So, I was happy with that. And here comes the crown wheel. There goes the screw. And that just lifts off. There we go. And this is a dual duty screw. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking it and I'm just going to go ahead and pull this off entirely so the three quarter plates held on by only one screw. And yeah, I was thinking that this would probably like be held on with a different one, but no, this is just the two things. And there it goes. Yeah, that part was pretty clean too, but yeah, I looked at this movement online and looking pretty hopeful now at this point. This seems like it's going to be pretty good. And then pulling out the thing that holds the keyless works in place. I pulled out the uh, wheel there at the same time, but that didn't get captured by the camera. And this is the last screw to get that plate off. Trying to keep it on camera. There we go. And that screw comes out. And I'm going to set back in the movement and lift that off. Yeah, look at that. All right. He's a, oh, he's a bit of a clean. I go for the barrel mainspring first, but it's it feels like it's stuck on something, so... I start with the escape wheel and examine that. Yeah, looks good. Could definitely use a cleaning, but looks fine otherwise. And there goes the fourth wheel. Then, yeah, I keep trying to go for the barrel, but decide to take the rest of the Keelix works out so I don't lose it. And it's that one. And then, yeah, I read up, and you can just pull this up into the side, and it comes right out. And you can see why, just a moment. It's that cog underneath. There's a wheel that's also for the minute hand, I believe. 
And so yeah, that hand is also staked in there through the other side. It doesn't get out. It's it's stuck in there. But it moves freely, so not a problem. Pulling out that broken lever. Just pop it right on out. We got one last wheel in there. And yeah, there's a bridge on the other side. Comes out easy enough. Two screws. One, two. Boop, there they are. Comes out, and then this, this you kind of got to feeds in from the bottom, or if you, you get it from an angle, it'll come in through the top. It takes a second, but that's that. And, oh, yep, last thing. Actually, here's the hardened pivot on the bottom that is also going to come out and needs to be cleaned separately. There you go. There you go, little buddy. Yeah, I need some watchmaker's putty. It's hard to pull some of these little bits up with just the tweezers. But that'll be for the next video whenever I possibly have some. Alright. So, uh, I put the balance back onto the main uh, plate there. And, yeah, I almost didn't have this on camera, but here's me uh, servicing the mainspring as well. I'm just making sure that that top wheel is moving freely. It pretty much does, but we'll see what it looks like after the, the cleaning. Pulls right off. And I'm honestly really happy with the mainspring. It looks really nice for what this is. And yeah, it's kind of just going to pop right on out of there. Right on out. And then pull the arbor and unwound the mainspring. Unwound all the way here. And yeah, that'll catch. I'm going to reuse that after I clean it. And there goes the arbor. Uh, arbor looks good. Not egg-shaped. There's the top of the crown wheel spot, the square peg where it goes into. And yeah, all that's going into the ultrasonic cleaner. I use a combination of a degreaser, like Dawn, Fairy. Uh, after that, I use uh, Deinture Mineral Spirits. And yeah, I accidentally ruined the dial at the same time. So the water I put it into was too hot, and then I dripped a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it just by accident, tried to fix it by wiping it up, and there it all went. All the letters were at the bottom of the water. But at least all the paint's gone. I was gonna do these, but I decided, you know what, let's just make it a part two. I'm gonna have to redo the dial, gonna redo the hands, so thanks for sticking with me on this one. Gonna go ahead and put it back together, and hopefully we can get it running, or some sort of running without that ratchet wheel. And yeah, so that's actually the new movement holder. This is me lubing up the mainspring, adding a little bit of light oil there, adding a little bit of light oil. So that's staked into there, but it's also supposed to move freely. It's a bit of an odd design, especially because the oil needs to come in from this side and not from the underside. Uh, and yeah, it took just a little bit, especially after the cleaning, but looks great. Oh, here's my favorite part. I love this part, the sound. Almost. Ah, uh, yeah. That's my favorite part of, the, of this bit. Make the little, little snap noise right there. And yeah, you want this to be flush so that way nothing rides up. So, assembly is a versa disassembly. Gonna go ahead and put that into place. Yeah, it just kind of slides in. Like I was saying, going from the top, if we can focus in, you just gotta kind of set it through there and there just like that boom turns nicely then we'll go ahead and set that bridge back in place uh apologies on the second half of the video i put the screws in hoping that they could be captured like as i was doing it but in the end all you see is just a glove on camera for 10 seconds as i screw things in so through the magic of editing boom there they are in place I uh, expect to see that for the rest of this. I'll have a second camera, hopefully, in the next video. But anyway, so here's me adding a little bit of oil to that gear I put in place. Uh, I put a little bit too much on there. Uh, I tried to pull it off with a cloth later, but I didn't capture that on the screen. Uh, here I'm putting in that wheel first, thinking that, you know what? If I get it in place, like I do here, I can just put the barrel back in and everything's going to be great. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope. Yeah, no, so in the end, I just 
spent some more time getting it back in place, took the barrel out, and decided, why don't I make the, the train of gears first? Let me just work on the movement works. And, yeah, let me also get some of that fuzz off. There it goes. Yep, gets that one in place. Get the escape wheel in place. Yep, there we go. It takes a minute. This is fiddly, especially for my first one, but gosh, I had fun. And then, yeah, once everything's in place and they're in their pivot spots, you can put the barrel in and everything sort of just comes into place and you can jostle it a little tiny bit and it won't go everywhere. So, yeah, what? Everything worked out that way. And finally, yeah, the three-quarter plate didn't clean up as nice as I'd like. I actually put it through a second time, but under the loop, everything looks clean. There's no grit, but it just, it's just kind of discolored. So, yeah, make sure to lift it so you don't move or break any of the pivots and set it gently into place. And so I'm going to zoom in here. All right, so if you look in the middle, uh, one of those pivots is in the hole, and the bottom one, like, it's not in the hole. And that's kind of what I'm working on. And so you can see it any second now. Like, you'll see it pop right into that spot in the bottom, like, bottom middle of the screen here. Any moment. If you just, oh, there it's coming. Here it's coming. Almost. Almost. Oh, there it went. There it went. You saw it. Now it's like it's a, it's kind of like a change in uh, albedo or luminosity. Like, it's very visible on the loop or on camera when it's happening, but it's a little... It's a little hard on video. Anyway, yep. I'm going ahead and using this dual purpose screw to tack it in place so I don't uh, lose anything. And then after that, I'm putting in this uh, little washer I made. Uh, I just had a little bit of plastic. Uh, I kind of cut it out and decided, you know what? Yeah, I think that'll work. Uh, I kind of tested it against the crown wheel here uh, until ultimately, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and screw that into place. I think it's going to fix it whenever I get a whenever I get a ratchet wheel in place, which is which is on the way. And then for the second part, uh, I put the keyless works back into place there. And at this point, I learned that the lever braking is really common on these movements. I'll include links below on how to fix that, but I'll also show you what I did to fix it here in just a few moments. Yeah, I'm deciding that before I fix the spring, I need to put that retainer back in. So there it is. There's the bolt that goes through. I thought I could catch it with the lip, but in the end, I just held it together and screwed it in place. And yeah, that actually worked out. So it's holding that pretty well. Uh, in the end, I had these bits of uh, PLA that are really springy, and I decided that I was going to give it a shot. This is just for me, and yeah, I've already messed up the dial, so really can't get worse at this point. And, you know, that's that's actually working out. Uh, I decided to go with it. All right, and so since I have that other uh, screw in place, I'm going to go ahead and put the click spring back in. And it kind of futz with it here for a second. There we go. Now the crown wheel comes back into place. And yeah, look at that. Yeah, it looks like it's definitely holding a little bit of power when I move it. And it goes one way. Goes the other way. Yeah, this is just me making sure everything's moving right. And so now comes the anchor. This part was both frustrating and fun. Uh, I'm going to speed this up here so you can see what I caught on camera before the camera battery died about 35 minutes in. Yeah, it's it's just this for 40 minutes. So, yeah, I just sped it up and then decided that, yeah, I'm going to cut the rest of it. So, it got in place. That's the way it looks when it's in there. And then you put the little bridge on. Same deal as the three-quarter plate. You really want that pivot to go through there. And like you kind of just like gently, like just sort of softly tap it into place, secure it, and then, yeah, the anchor with a little bit of power in it made me think that this, you really want to make sure that the pivot from the balance wheel gets in that uh, little spot. And it works right. 
uh the part i didn't have going is i didn't have this uh bottom uh hardened pivot in place so that was throwing me off for a bit once it's there though works great yeah look at that adding a little bit of oil there a little bit of oil to all the pivot spots and just gonna add a little bit of power to the wheel yeah this that ratchet wheel still isn't there but yeah let's well, go and it goes it just needs a little more power yeah if i could wind it i think it would work fine but for now i'm happy enough so let's put in that floating cannon pinion sort of deal here it goes hi little friend there's the next one i think this is the minute wheel And there's that dial washer, and you can see the hands there to the left. Yeah, yeah, I was having a real, real time with that. Yep, there it is. You know, it's real functional still. I'm not unhappy with it in the sense that, like, I can tell the time if it was running, like, as it should. But honestly, it's just a reminder to myself to be careful with these vintage dials and, you know, have some respect for them more than, more than I did before. But yeah so just a little bit of even pressure all around get that back in place same with the minute hand uh you can see the minute hand's a little bent i caught that earlier but i thought it'd be okay now it needs just a little adjustment barely moving it with the tweezers there and then making sure it's still flush after that yeah looking good looking good yep it goes all the way around And there, getting a little bit of the gentle pressure to get that second sand on. And I really want to see this running, I don't know about you, but I'm going to engage the click spring on the wheel a little bit just to see that runs. And yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, no, back on camera. There we go. Look at that. Man, oh man. Yeah, I've been doing this for just a couple days, so I'm really happy with this. Cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, like, share, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Thanks for joining me, and thanks for sitting through this video. I'll see you all in the next one. All right. Thanks. Bye.